Mr. Anuj Sontal from Valerum Advisors. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to you all. My name is Anuj Sontal from Valerum Advisors. We represent the investor relations of Iron Exchange India Limited. On behalf of the company, I would like to th thank you all for participating in the company's earnings conference call for the third quarter and nine months ended of financial year 2021. Before I begin, I would like to mention the short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's earnings conference call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's beliefs as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings conference call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. I would now like to introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings conference call and give it over to them for their opening remarks. We have with us Mr. Ankur Patni, Executive Director, Mr. N. Mr. N. M. Randive, Executive Vice President of Finance, Mr. Vasam Naik, Senior Vice President of Finance, and Mr. Milan Puranik, Company Secretary. Um, I now request Mr. Vasan Naik uh, to give his opening remarks. And over to you. Good afternoon, everybody. It is a pleasure to welcome you to the earnings conference call for the third quarter and nine months ended financial year 2021. First, let me take you through the third quarter financial performance of a company on a consolidated basis. The operating income for the quarter was INR 3492 million a decrease of approximately 12% on a year-on-year -year basis. Operating EBITDA reported was INR 445 million, which was an increase of about 14% on a year-on-year -year basis. Operating EBITDA margin stood at 12.74%, which improved by 290 basis points on year on year basis. Net profit after tax was INR 287 million, which grew by about 9% on a year-on-year -year basis. Back margin percentages were 8.22%, an improvement of 162 basis points on a year on year basis. There has been a steady improvement in the financial performance of the company post the gradual resumption of the economic activity. I will not take you through the quarterly segmental performance on a consolidated basis. In the engineering division, the revenue for the quarter was INR 2161 million, a decline by 15%, and the EBITDA was INR 160 million, down by about 20%. The order inflow has improved during the quarter and we expect the trend to continue in the ensuing quarter as well. The supply and the civil works of the Sri Lanka project were adversely affected during the presence of the COVID infections in the country. News for this project have been recognized in the quarter based on the work progress. We expect the situation to normalize in this quarter. The order execution of other ongoing engineering orders picked up pace, resulting in the improved sales and margins. In the chemical division, the revenue for the quarter recorded was INR 1.5 million, down by about 7% on a year-on-year -year basis. The EBIT was INR 268 million, an increase of 51%. Sales and dispatches have normalized in this quarter, and we remain cautiously optimistic of the continued improvement in this segment. Margins improved due to higher turnover coupled with operational efficiencies and benefits on account of improved product mix. Lastly, in the consumer product division, the revenue for the quarter was INR 285 million and the loss for the quarter was INR 7 million. While volume under the consumer segment picked up in this quarter, certain segments continue to remain affected due to the after effects of the COVID lockdown measures, thereby impacting the turnover. Coming to the nine monthly performance on a consolidated basis, the operating income was INR uh, 10,044 million, a decrease by approximately 11% on a year on year basis. The operating EBITDA was INR 1167 million, an increase by about 23% on a year on year basis. The operating EBITDA margin stood at 11.62%, which improved by 319 basis points year on year. And the net profit after tax reported was INR 729 million, a growth of 12% on a year on year basis. The PAT margin percentage was 7.26%, which improved by 147 basis points on a year on year basis. 
Now coming to the consolidated segmental performance on a nine monthly basis, in the engineering division, the turnover was INR 6497 million, a decline of 10% on a year on year basis. A bit margin was INR 438 million, a decrease of 14%. In the, consumer, in the chemical division, the revenue recorded was INR 3098 million, a decrease of 14% on a year on year basis. And the reported EBIT for this segment was INR 672 million, an increase of 32% on a year on year basis. In the consumer division, the turnover for the nine monthly uh, period was INR 707 million, a decline of 24% as compared to the previous nine months. Loss for the segment was INR 23 million. As we complete, open the concourse for question and answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of uh, Sunil Kotari from Unique Investments. Please go ahead. Thanks for the sir. Congratulations for a really good set of numbers when uh, very challenging time. Uh, sir, my question is a little larger to understand on uh, chemical segment. Uh, we have really done very well in terms of profitability during this uh, nine months and this quarter. But our revenue during last six, eight, nine quarters, if you look, we are ranging between 100 and 120 crore in the range of uh, from maybe around 110, 12. So to understand the things, which are the roadblocks to the growth? Because we were very positive and optimistic on the growth opportunity in the chemical segment, which I, I believe, again, also we will be definitely uh, doing those things. But uh, which are the impediments and challenges, maybe domestic and export both the market? First, with my discretion. I think uh, what I did for the components uh, uh, in the overall performance. Thank you. As far as the chemical segment is concerned, uh, we have progressively uh, seen improvements uh, in the quarter. The businesses quite dependent on the overall level of operations of the consumer industries. Mm -hmm. uh, so during the period when the pandemic was in full rage, the operation levels of the various industries had come down substantially, thereby they had an impact on the consumption uh, patterns of chemicals. And that led to a dip uh, in the top line numbers. This had happened both on the domestic and international front. Mm -hmm. As of the last quarter, uh, as Nathan had mentioned, we have seen progressive improvement and a lot of the overall top line numbers have come to near normal levels. Mm -hmm. And hence, on the domestic front, the uh, the performance has been much better than as compared on the international front, where the impact of the pandemic is still being felt in some of our major markets, notably North America and Europe. Mm -hmm. The levels of uh, revenue which we normally get from these markets uh, and what we are expecting uh, once the operating levels of the various industries may have come back to normal, that would be substantially higher than what we are getting today. That's that's the primary reason why we are still not seeing the growth which this segment promises. All right. So sir, on your uh, outlook on margin also will remain uh, very positive because we are uh, really improving well on margin also. So how you look in the medium term this margin scenario? Uh, chemical segment particularly? The margins are, uh, uh, you know, 
very sustainable at uh, the levels which you currently see. We have uh, had a lot of improvements on the front of efficiency and uh, uh, output focus. Uh, therefore, the uh, progressively as our development capacity utilization climbs further with increased stop line numbers, we should only uh, hope to see some further improvements on the margin levels. Okay. Mm -hmm. My last question is, uh, uh, in AGM, uh, we were discussed about uh, consolidation of international subsidiaries and uh, some associates merger with the listed company. Any update would you like to come in? Because we are doing a lot of right things in terms of corporate governance, in terms of balance sheet, treasury, shares, and all these things. So this is just one point on which uh, sometimes investors are, uh, I mean, raising issues about uh, so many subsidiaries and associates. So would like to just talk, uh, listen your views on this consolidation of uh, so many entities. A lot of the international subsidiaries are required for uh, operating in those respective countries. Uh, you would know that uh, many of the uh, countries in the Middle East and uh, Southeast Asia as well as in Africa uh, have now brought in provisions which give substantial preference to domestic countries in those countries. Right. So it is quite advantageous to have a local company there, and that's one of the primary reasons why uh, independent companies operate in the respective geographies. Uh, besides that, there are other companies in, uh, in within our field in India, uh, which we are in the process of uh, consolidating. Uh, we would uh, hear about uh, you know, merger of a few entities into the main company in the near future. The process is already on, and uh, uh, we, because of the intermittent hurdles which we face on account of COVID and other issues, so that uh, process has taken longer than we had originally expected. But it is progressing uh, okay now. We are uh, hoping that in the next uh, four to five months, that process should be uh, that one stage process will be completed. Great, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Siddharth Rajpurohit from GHP Securities. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir, and thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on uh, study set numbers. Sir, uh, first you. on the uh, chemical business, sir. So, what are our uh, key raw materials and where do we source it from, sir? It's a very wide range of uh, products that we deal with. Uh, there are various sets of raw materials that we uh, would be using. A few of them are petroleum based, and there are others which are not uh, petroleum based but have a very uh, broad chemistry associated. Uh, and the sourcing is, a, is a, also a wide mix of international and domestic sources. Uh, we have, over a period of time, uh, tried to make sure that our uh, concentration of uh, sourcing in any particular geography is limited to the extent possible. Okay, sir. Can we have a breakup between petroleum and non-petroleum non and domestic and import, sir? Broad breakup? Uh, not, not at this point of time. Uh, okay. I can I can very broadly indicate that uh, uh, you know in terms of uh, the petroleum based uh, chemistry mm -hmm. that would be uh, quite a significant percentage. Uh, but uh, uh, I would not be able to share with you an exact percentage at this point of time. Uh, having said that, the other point to also note is even where we have a petroleum based chemistry, mm -hmm. the price movement of those raw materials are not in tandem with the crude price movement. If that is what we are trying to ascertain, uh, some of these uh, uh, have quite independent price movement patterns, uh, which is uh, which is 
uh, if you try to correlate them with the premium price movement, we might not get a very good correlation. Okay. And sir, on the margins, I want to understand, is the margin because of uh, higher realization or better uh, cost uh, uh, to the company? Uh, we are benefiting from uh, you know, better realizations. Uh, as I mentioned a little while earlier, uh, some uh, quite a few uh, sets of initiatives which have led to improvement in efficiency and uh, increased uh, operating throughputs. So all of these have together contributed uh, to the uh, increased margin level. There have been some intermittent benefits of uh, better costs uh, or advantageous cost price movement. Uh, which is more transient in nature, but the other elements which have contributed to margins are much more sustainable. Okay, so with capacity utilization, we are currently at 60, I think 60% plus. So with utilization, the margins are a scope to increase. Yes, with increasing utilization, the margins uh, would have a tendency to increase further. So in the uh, membrane units, sir, we are at what utilization? Overall, we will be roughly around 70%. Okay, sir. And in the engineering uh, division, sir, what what, uh, what is the order booking in this quarter, sir? Uh, I think uh, last quarter, can you throw some light on the order booking? Please? Sorry? Sorry, sir? Yeah, we will just share that number with you. Order booking at 620 crores at the end of the December quarter. Uh, what was there in this quarter, sir? This quarter, the inflow was 170 crores. 70 crores. Okay, sir. And, sir, my. Uh one more question, Ben, then I'll come back in the queue, sir. So our uh, receivables are on the stretch, are uh, stretched, even though we are more focused on the industrial and not on municipal kind of. So what is the reason for the stretched receivables, sir? And what is the scope for improvement, although we have ready, steadily been improving? Uh, I think, uh, uh, in the March, also, and I, as well as in the September and in December, they are in the region of uh, just under 473 crores, uh, and that level was around 520, 513 crores in March. So, receivables have come down and hmm. You see, our major chunk of the business is engineering segment, uh, where about, uh, if you see, more than 60% of our turnover comes from the engineering segment. And the payments are, uh, there is always a 10 to 15% retention, which is retained from the every uh, uh, trade, every invoicing which we do. A mm. fair amount of the receivables is uh, part of the retention. And this mm. is the nature of the EPC business. So, mm -hmm. Overall, my receivables uh, are um, in line with the kind of business we are doing. Okay, but the government has reduced this now to, I think, 3%. So, will this help? No, that 3% reduction is only in the gas performance guarantees. Not in, and we are doing a lot of business with the private sector also. So, okay. And PSUs. So, okay. I don't think that will, the retention percentage per se will get substantially affected. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, and all the best. I'll come back in the queue for more questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tipin Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for this opportunity, and congratulations on a good set of numbers, sir. Uh, sir, I had a couple of questions uh, on the engineering side. Uh, firstly, if you can just throw some more light on the Sri Lankan order, what were the issues, is what? Is it primarily COVID because of which the project has, uh, you know, uh, been elongated? And when do we expect the project to get completed? That's the first question. And the second question is, sir, uh, how do we see the visibility of this business uh, in the next year? Since we have an order book of about 600 odd crores, which is approximately two quarters of revenue. So we were actually talking about a large order and uh, if you can just give us some more visibility on how should we expect things going ahead over the next uh, one year. Well, 
uh, uh, Sri Lankan uh, revenues had been impacted in the last quarter because of yeah. the, the fresh wave of uh, COVID infections, which has resurfaced in the country. And mm-hmm. because of that, material movement as well as labor movement was affected quite a bit. Uh, we are quite hopeful that this situation will improve in the current quarters. Uh, and our uh, uh, expectation is that by the end of the year, the total revenue that we will book on this account should be in the region of around 350 to 375 crores. Okay. So that's broadly on the Sri Lankan front. Uh, in terms of visibility for the future, uh, visibility is pretty good. Uh, as I had mentioned uh, in the previous call also, we are uh, uh, very much on the closure. We are closing out a uh, couple of large contracts. Uh, okay. Which, uh, you know, it's only the process of documentation which is currently on. Uh, we yeah. should be in a position to uh, announce it uh, pretty soon. But the orders are, uh, you know, as I mentioned, will be subject to the closing documentation. Sure. Yeah, so that's very reassuring to hear, sir. Uh, and sir, was just one more thing I had uh, that's more on the balance sheet side. Sir, we have got some treasury shares which have been outstanding for quite some time. Uh, could you just give us some management perspective on how do you intend to go ahead with these treasury shares? Whether we want to liquidate them or we should expect these to stay in the balance sheet for some time? Okay. These are shares held by uh, Employee Plus. Uh, they have never been in the market in terms of being available for trading. And the trust has held on to these shares for uh, more than 35 years or so. Yes, yes. 35 yes. years. So there is no intention to bring these uh, uh, you know, in the open market for uh, trading or any such activities. Okay. Uh, sir, in the last year, we had realized about 20 odd crores from sale of some shares. Am I right in my understanding? Uh, this was under heavy directions. So uh, we required certain uh, changes in the way the trust shares are retained and paid. And based on those uh, regulations, the company uh, had to uh, initiate certain transactions in them. And uh, the shares which were disposed by the trust were uh, taken up by the other uh, constituents of the promoter. So there was no sale in the open market. Okay, okay, okay. Right, sir. Thank you very much and all the very best to you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Drushul Saveri from Aditya Birla Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. This is a very maybe request to please go yeah. to the question. Yeah, hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is, sir, on the new capex on the chemical side, uh, have we taken any uh, decision on the greenfield plant and what are the thoughts there? Yes, we have taken a decision. We are proceeding with the, uh, with the plants to expand capacity. Uh, land is already being uh, uh, Light for and uh, allotted. Uh, we should be therefore uh, on track to uh, have this greenfield project commercialized by the end of uh, FY22 uh, or latest by the beginning of FY23. Okay, and what will be the total capex here? Uh, on our uh, our investment would be close to. Uh, around 100 crores or thereabouts. Uh, further funds would be used, uh, banking funds would be used also. So, overall, cases in the uh, equipment would be uh, north of 100 crores. Okay, okay. Got it. Thanks, thanks for this. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hitesh Chen from an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks and uh, good afternoon to the management. Uh, so I had a couple of questions on the engineering segment and probably one uh, on your overall you know, cash flows and balance sheet situation. 
Uh, first, uh, could you please help us understand the reason for the decline in engineering revenues, given that the booking numbers have consistently stayed very strong? Uh, you know, how should we look at this conversion of uh, the book that you have to bill? And, uh, you know, typically how many months is this takes? And uh, within engineering, what is the proportion of revenues which are repeat or flow? And what is the proportion that is impacted by the book you have? So that's the first question. The second is a related one. Uh, if I see the capital employed in your financials uh, within the engineering segment, you have shown a 70 crore increase year on year, and there has been a decline in quarterly, uh, you know, in the quarterly revenue that you have on a year on year basis. Uh, so, could you please help us uh, reconcile this? Uh, should we be modeling a very material pickup in revenue in the engineering segment due to some investments that are taking place currently? Uh, lastly, if I look at, uh, you know, your working capital cycle, uh, and somebody has already asked a question in your receivables, uh, a large chunk of why you've been able to have that efficiency in the working capital cycle is also because of the elongation of the payable days uh, in line with the receivable days. Now, who are these vendors to uh, whom you are making these payments, and, you know, uh, what are the contours of that, if you could explain that, please. Thank you. Vasil, uh, would you uh, like to answer the question on the composition of uh, this increased uh, working capital number? The the gentleman asked. Yes. Now, coming first, I think one uh, question which was raised is uh, why is the uh, capital employed in this segment is higher and there's a 70 crore increase? I think that was one of yes. the questions which was raised in the engineering segment. Yes. I think because of the increase in the cash and uh, uh, bank deposit for, uh, for the uh, primarily in the Sri Lanka project, some of the collections have come at the reporting end of the quarter and the year end. And in the, that's why the cash and bank figures have increased and that has resulted to in the higher capital employed for the engineering segment. That was the second question which was raised is, why the engineering revenue has declined on a quarterly basis uh, despite the higher order inflow. The engineering revenue is also inclusive of the Sri Lanka revenue which we account uh, every quarter. And in this quarter, the Sri Lanka revenue was uh, uh, recognized lower at around 43 crores. And uh, if we exclude the Sri Lanka revenue from the overall numbers in all the uh, uh, quarters, the, for this quarter, the engineering revenue, in fact, has grown by almost 19%. So, yes, uh, if you have to the Sri Lanka revenue, the higher order inflow which has come, that is now getting reflected in the uh, revenue which you are accounting in the quarter. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, now, uh, again, on the capital employed question, so is it uh, fair to correlate that uh, the increase in capital employed that we have seen uh, you know, on a year on year, even on a sequential basis, is mostly because of the Sri Lanka project and the flow through impact of that into revenues will come in the next few quarters? Yeah, as I mentioned, the capital employed has increased because of the collection which we got from the project at the quarter end, and that has uh, led to the increase in the higher increase in the cash and bank. So that correspondingly has. Uh, Capital employed for this uh, project. If I could just ask a question on your, uh, you know, the 100 crore greenfield project that you talked about, is there any sense of uh, revenues or the volumes, uh, you know, or even the target market that you're looking at, uh, you know, for the next five years, given the high asset term that your business, is, you know, as it stands right now, currently has? Because if I see your net block um, and the revenues that you generate, uh, there is a 10x asset term. So if you could give us a little bit of a sense on how you look at revenues over the next five years, please. Thank you. Uh, we would be uh, increasing capacity uh, by almost uh, 100% on the given manufacturing uh, setup. And therefore, the potential of revenue growth there is equivalent to what we uh, currently generate from the regions uh, uh, set up and over a period of three to five years, we should see a progressive improvement in the product mix. That is what is one of the targets of this new capacity expansion, also, which should have a consequent benefit on overall realization uh, levels and also on the margins. 
Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anil Kumar Sharma, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and uh, congrats for the good number. My question is: first question is, okay. what is where do you we just see the next year, 22? This year is uh, extraordinary year, uh, 22. Where you see your uh, projections of Vita and uh, uh, revenue? And number two, we are we planning some listing in NSE because our main hindrance is yeah, our uh, stock is not listed in NSE. We have initiated the process of getting our things listed on the NSE. Uh, the process is on, and in due course of time, we hope that that will uh, happen. Uh, in terms of next year projections, we are looking at substantial improvement both on the front of engineering as well as chemical revenue. As we have been discussing over this call as well as the previous call, both of these segments have suffered uh, quite a bit during the first half and also partly in the uh, third quarter of this year, which, uh, if it was under normal circumstances, we should have seen a decent amount of growth come in uh, even within the current year. Uh, as it stands today, we are hoping to end the year with uh, almost flattish as compared to the previous year. So we would be able to make up the deficit which we have seen in the first half of the year and part of the third quarter. Uh, and there is a further uh, hope that we would be able to show some mild growth towards the end of this year. Uh, of course, uh, I should add a caveat that there are a couple of major contracts, including Sri Lanka, which, uh, uh, in which we expect revenues to flow through in a certain quantum. Uh, and if there is some uh, further unexpected disruption on these accounts, then uh, my projection, as I mentioned, could change slightly. But overall, the trend is that we should be able to wipe out the deficit, which we have seen in the first half of the year. Uh, next year should see a substantial growth uh, on top of these numbers. And uh, last question, sir, uh, regarding consumer business. Uh, when we we expect we are expecting this year to be break even. Uh, we can we expect next year to be break even in the consumer business. Yes, our expectation was very much uh, that we would see a break even on the consumer segment in 2020-21. However, as often repeated, the year has not gone as planned. Uh, right. It is uh, looking a little unlikely that that break even would happen in this year, but almost certainly, uh, when subject to things being normal, we should see that turnaround happen in the next year. All right, sir. Thanks and good luck for the coming year. Thank you. Please get it the NSE listing at the earliest. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Siddha Rajpurohit from JHP Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity again, sir. Sir, what is our gross debt and cash level? The gross debt, I mean, it is, uh, we are not uh, taking any fresh borrowing during the quarter. So, uh, whatever repayment of the term loans that has happened, so right, it will be around the same level as of uh, September, uh, slightly lower than September. Okay, and what will be the cash on books, sir? Cash on equivalent? Uh, it will be higher than what we had in the month of September because uh, uh, it will be September we had around 410 crores, uh, which mm -hmm. included uh, all the project uh, uh, project uh, cash as well as the general. So now mm -hmm. in the region of around 440 crores. Okay, and would we be taking debt for the capex, sir? Yes. Okay, and what will be the asset turn on in this 100 crore capex in the resin business? Over a period of time, we should see it, uh, around uh, three times. Um, but again, when I'm talking about a period of three years, three years plus. So somewhere in the region of uh, 2.25 to three times. Okay, sir. And sir, 
what is your long term guidance at 3 4 years down the line where we, uh, where can we be in terms of grow uh, revenue and profitability uh that's that's a uh, quite a long term projection that you are asking of me uh, i can give you very broad uh, guidance rather than coming to specific numbers uh, my expectation is we should be growing substantially on uh, the chemical front with the expanded capacities coming in through on resins as well as the other chemicals that we manufacture uh, in a 3 to 4 year period we should be looking at a multiple of where we are today uh, on the engineering front uh, i am very hopeful that uh, we will be in a position to secure uh, quite a few of larger orders uh, in the tune or in the uh, type of uh, sri lankan contract which we currently have yeah. further to that our presence in the international market is seeing a very good trend uh, we have been able to make inroads in some of our established geographies but into larger industrial contracts uh, and we see continuous improvement Uh, in obtaining orders of uh, the smaller or more modular equipments, uh, therefore, it would be safe to say that we are looking at multiple of the news uh, happening on both of these uh, accounts. Consumer segment uh, has been depressed uh, for quite some time, but uh, I remain very optimistic with some of the new products that are being planned. and the strategic changes to focus in certain uh, sub segments of this market uh, they are due to give us substantial benefits and the revenue multiple which we should see on this trend over a 3 to 5 year period should be uh, quite quite substantial we should be looking at a good growth in the market Okay. And sir, for uh, that is very good, sir. So for FY22, can we assume say 20% growth, given the very depressed year? Uh, I think uh, as it stands today, uh, I am more than hopeful that we should be able to surpass that number uh, and to a good extent. Uh, but i would be more comfortable giving uh, guidance on this trend somewhere uh, around the next fall okay thank you sir and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of arpit sikha from karma capital please go ahead uh good afternoon sir uh, thanks a lot for this opportunity i had uh, i was just going to uh, there have been a lot of reports uh, environmental reports about the damage that desalination has been causing on the nearby ecosystem so just wanted to know if uh, uh, like one uh, project is set up for desalination does the company also provide solutions for remediation or uh, like the impact that the project would have on the nearby ecosystem Uh, are there any ways uh, available by which uh, some uh, the impact can be reduced? Uh, we do not offer services for remediation or environmental remediation per se. Uh, mm-hmm. But almost every large project of desalination uh, that is undertaken would be accompanied by a very thorough environmental study, uh, which is carried out. Uh, Uh, you know whether it is an industrial project which comes up, or if it is a uh, uh, government project which comes up, an environmental study uh, on the impacts uh, is we require to know most of the cases. Uh, okay. The, the effort is always that the way that the water is taken in and the way that the the project water is thrown out uh, mm-hmm. is in a way which. Uh, minimizes potential impact on the environment and the ecosystem per se uh, and we continue to uh, be very sensitive to this area 
and until and unless we are convinced that uh, the overall or the larger benefit lies in the project, uh, we uh, you know are quite hesitant to participate in such projects. Okay, and and sir, so can you throw some light on that when you say that uh, you know uh, how the water is taken in and how it's going out? Uh, there are things by which you can mitigate. So, what are those? What what can be done in those things? Uh, we can take this question, uh, you know, on a different forum. Uh, if there is of interest to you, we can certainly uh, throw light on this and uh, uh, the good should be in a position to organize such a discussion. Uh, all right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question is, uh, globally in the last few months, uh, bottled water companies are doing very well. Considering our company's depth and breadth in the water business, doesn't it make sense to launch a premium bottled water brand like Evian or a mass market bottled water like Rail Need or flavored water? Uh, the uh, Alex Chain has been the supplier to Indian Railways under the brand of Rail Need for very long years. Uh, and a large part of uh, uh, you know, the existence of the brand of Aurelio, we have been you know, one of the only suppliers to uh, the railways. So we have been very much present on this funding. We also supply our equipment to uh, quite a number of these bottle water suppliers, uh, premium and otherwise. However, our intention to participate directly in this market by going with our own brand and this uh, is currently not there. My next question is, uh, how is the new product development pipeline looking at the new uh, R&D setup at Pitanjuru? We've got a, a pretty good track record of bringing in lots of innovative products into the Indian market. In fact, one of the pioneers in a lot of technologies like reverse osmosis or zero liquid discharge, we were the first to bring these into the country. We continue to innovate on all fronts, including the chemicals space. Uh, and the engineering space. I'm certain that the new facility that we have uh, brought up will enhance our ability to speed up the introduction of newer products and also uh, make sure that uh, we are uh, consistently at the leading, uh, at the leading innovator in this way. Uh, when was the last time we had a price hike in the chemical resins business and the membranes business? If you could throw some light on that. That's a continuous process. Uh, depends upon the market dynamics uh, and various sub products in the resin as well as the membrane portfolio would have their independent cycles of price changes. Thank you. That will be all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sunil Kothari from Unique Investments. Please go ahead. Thanks for again for opportunity. So my question is, uh, we have very high receivable, but uh, major portion of that is you rightly said is our uh, returns and money. So if you can provide us the number with uh, what are the returns and money out of those receivable. Eighty crores. Sorry. Eight zero eighty crores. Eight zero eighty crores. Thank you. And sir, my uh, next question is: uh, we uh, we are planning to invest around hundred crore plus something in this new chemical uh, 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 greenfield facility. And what I understand is you are planning to commercialize this by maybe twenty uh, end of this uh, next uh, uh, financial year, twenty one twenty two. Is it um, uh, right understanding? 
that's correct that is the current plan but we should be in a position to complete the execution of this meaningful project by the end of fiscal 22 or latest by the beginning of fiscal 23 okay okay and sir last question is uh, our real plan was to finish this uh, sri lankan order by may or june uh, 2021 as things stand today what's your expectation now any any major change or delayed this deadline or you feel by june we'll be able to complete Uh, consequent upon the uh, resurgence of uh, the covid infections in the country and the uh, hurdles that we have been facing in recent time uh, on material movement as well as labor movement it is likely that it will uh, now shift by at least a couple of months uh, if not more okay. okay thank you a lot thank you very much and wish you good luck okay Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, if you can uh, share some thoughts uh, or give some color on the uh, prospects of a stock split or a conservative bonus issue. As of now, it is. Uh, uh, it's not something which we have considered. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhav Das, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. I want to congratulate the company for the calibrated and consistent growth. You are never, you know, you never go out of board or uh, you are never uh, uh, agitated with the um, situation. That is one uh, fine quality uh, find in the company. I want to congratulate, sir. Mm-hmm. And then. And then another uh, uh, this thing uh, that the chemical division uh, commercialization. I think I have missed that. Is it the uh, end of uh, financial year 22 or is it the calendar year 22 end, sir? Uh, it's talking about financial year uh, 22, so somewhere uh, towards the end of the last quarter of the financial year 22 or the beginning of. Financial 23. That's the kind of things that we are looking at. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kati Kothari from Unique Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity, sir. So my question was on the chem- the margins that we that we are seeing on the chemical side. It has substantially improved over last six eight quarters. Uh, one of the reasons you did mention was operational efficiency that we have seen, uh, but another reason that we mentioned in the presentation is also product mix change. Let me just talk about qualitatively how has the product mix changed over the last two two and a half years that we have seen such substantial change in margin. It's a, a continuous effort on our part to uh, make sure that we are improving the ratio. Of higher value added products uh, going into premium segment. Uh, these include products which are targeted for the pharma sector, uh, food and beverage sector, um, to name just a few. Uh, and over the course of uh, you know, quite a few quarters now, that effort uh, has been increasing. If it was not uh, gained for Uh, depression which we are seeing in the international market, uh, this uh, ratio would uh, have seen a further improvement. <clears throat> so, on a very broad level, I would expect that uh, the overall concentration of these higher value added products would continue to improve. Fair enough. Fair enough. And sir, in continuation to uh, to an answer to earlier participant regarding the uh, the welfare trust shares which got sold last year about twenty odd crores uh, worth of shares, uh, I believe that money did come into the company, right? Because it was part of our cash flow last year. Correct. But the remaining shares that we hold, we don't intend to sell. That's right. It flowed through to the company because of the. 
obligations which the trust had to own. Okay, so the remaining shares are owned by I N Exchange Company, right? The uh, the employee welfare trusts are held by the trust themselves. Uh, as I had mentioned earlier, that these are not uh, trust, these are not shares which are meant for trading or transacting on the stock exchange in general. So as against the typical treasury share which is held under stock option scheme. These are not uh, not in that nature. Okay, okay. Fair enough, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Due to time constraints, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. N M Randeve from Iron Exchange India Limited for closing comments. Thank you all for participating in this arranged consult. I hope we have been able to answer your questions satisfactorily. If you have any further questions or would like to know more about the company, please reach out to our investment relations at Velarom Advisors. Wish you all a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Iron Exchange India, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.